The No New Friends Podcast is brought to you by Sandpiper Vacations. For the best in vacation plannings, just visit www.sandpipervacations.com. Let them know that the No New Friends Podcast sent you. The whole birthing thing, by the way, did not look. Did not look. Didn't take a peek. Nothing. That is not my job. What? That uh, I listen. I was. I. I what, what? What is? What is that going to do for me? Other than traumatize me? Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, I, I Sean, like, and I, Sean and I were like, we watched it, but we, we were literally like twenty feet across the yeah. room. No, like, no, I don't no, want to no. be close to this. <laughs> like, I, I don't was, know. I, I was at Emily's face. I, I was uh, during the whole That's pro- a good place. I yeah. was. I was uh, wiping her face now with a cool rag, just the whole time. And that's where I need to be, right? That's the that's mm-hmm. the way I could help. I'm not doing anything down there, <laughs> except for except for scarring myself, maybe becoming yeah. gay. Seriously, uh, and, and like that's like, how that I turned. Not, that nothing. That would have that would have probably I broken think, my marriage. Uh, like, uh, well, like I think when I was born, I probably just opened my eyes, saw vagina, and was just like, nope, <laughs> I'm good. Broadcasting from the Sandpiper Vacation Studios. It's time for the No New Friends Podcast. The podcast for adults who love to laugh at adulting. The good, the bad, and the funny. Okay, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. It's showtime. It's showtime. That's right, you're listening to the No New Friends Podcast, voted number one by our friends and family, and number three by the Orlando Weekly Readers Poll. We are the podcast for adults who love to laugh at adulting. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, all of our links are right there on our website, nonewfriendspodcast.com. While you're there, check out our really sweet merchandise. Join our clubhouse. Become a friend with benefits. That's our Patreon. For as low as $2 a month, you get all sorts of exclusive access. You get entered into different giveaways that we have for Crocs and Other prizes throughout the year. Goddamn dogs. We are live right now on the YouTube. That's right. We go live on YouTube for everybody to see us recording these episodes. And these episodes have become very visual, very video oriented. And we do that every Wednesday night, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also Lewis, Sarah, Darren and I go live from the theme parks almost every single Wednesday, 930 a.m., either Disney or Universal. My name is Scott. I'm the host with me, as always, the scumbag reselling hoarder himself, Chris. I wish I was drunker. Our Jewish American princess, Sarah. I agree with Chris. (laughs) Our emotional support, Gay Nick. Uh, I could use one, too. So uh, we have so much to get to today i chris has to tell us some something big happening actually i'll tell you all what has happened big in his life okay um chris and his amazing wife emily have uh brought into the world uh my version of the spawn of satan uh this baby <laughs> has ruined my life uh since the moment it uh graced us with his presence let me tell you what happened to me last week chris uh (laughs) so (laughs) you're you're i get the text message on what was it monday or tuesday sunday night sunday night night, night. yeah yeah yeah. i think we're in early labor or whatever and i was like that could last three weeks don't worry about it um and that was the last that i heard until the next at two o'clock in the morning was yeah um they're inducing emily and i'm like oh wow that escalated quickly and then i looked at my calendar and i was like crap it's tuesday um, okay. So we're, we're a week ahead. No big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So, so enter Wednesday. Wednesday is TikTok day. And Lewis and Sarah informed me that day that, Hey, we've got a hard out time of like 1130. Okay. No big deal. Hard what? Hard out time. Oh, oh. Of Do you have any pictures of the hard out? <laughs> <laughs> we usually go till 12. Well, then Darren informs me, Hey, I also have a hard out time. Oh. of like 12 and i'm like wait ones. so no but one's gonna join me for the indiana hard. jones show today <laughs> and the answer is no no one's joining me for the indiana jones show then chris this is why your child may be the spawn of satan oh, it's here. Okay. um the rain comes down oh it, it starts pouring. pouring well you're welcome you're probably pretty hot that day you're welcome no i well we had our neck fan which you can get on our tiktok shop <laughs> <laughs> But I, as I'm walking to the park, I look at Darren. I said, this is 13's fault uh, because that is what I'm calling your child because she's been bad luck for me uh, since coming into this earth. So um, she actually is the first descendant of both um, Benjamin Franklin and the Jersey Devil. 
So, okay. <laughs> uh, so I'm related to Benjamin Franklin on my side. Emily's related to the Jersey Devil on her side. Don't ask me to fact check that. It's true. It's at a book. Has her maiden name in it. It all adds up. Okay. The Jersey Devil's mom's last name was Emily's maiden name. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So luckily, luckily, my true bestie, Hannah, and her husband, President Richard, they joined me at the park so I could see the Indiana Jones show. But I was bored. And Chris, I indulged in one of our favorite pastimes, and that is <gasps> watching Kelsey Ray Kelsey NPC. Ray. On yeah. TikTok. Yeah, I've already Can, showed my daughter Kelsey Ray. Yeah, please explain to everybody <laughs> who Kelsey Ray is. Kelsey Ray is an NPC um, uh, TikToker, which is a non playable character in a video game that just kind of stands there. They don't serve any purpose. They're just kind of in the background doing something over and over and over again, such like the Mountain People I was talking about in the Mountain People episode. Kelsey Ray responds the same way to every single donation, whether it's a rose or a lightning bolt. And it's uh, for I some people, I'm sure. Just yeah, for you. For some people, I'm sure it's erotic for them. I, I think that people- For some off. people or for <laughs> yeah. two out of the four of us? I don't know about Nick and Sarah. I'm not sure if you guys are turned on by that kind of I, stuff. I, I don't even know what's happening anymore. <laughs> there, no, but I was telling Lewis earlier about the cyborg lady and she is impressive. I don't know of this. Lady. I don't know oh, the cyborg see, lady. Now, now you're going to get invested. You're welcome. See, the people of TikTok is why TikTok can't go away. <laughs> yeah. If Kel if TikTok goes away, I will uh, – I'll subscribe to anything Kelsey Ray uh, mm -hmm. puts out. So there's something just so charming about her. She is um, very charming. And when people donate lightning bolts and go, ow, I can't believe oh, you just I sent that. Just it, makes, sent it, that. <laughs> it makes my heart hurt. <laughs> That's my favorite. It makes my that heart hurt. I feel so bad favorite. that she's getting shocked by these lightning that bolts. That and the high bear. Just a uh, hi. Here's a hug just for you. I like the GG when she has the little GG dance. GG. GG. <laughs> 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 then we have Wish Kelsey Ray too, but she has, she stands she doesn't stand uh, you know. Yeah, but Wish Kelsey too. Ray watches our streams and gifts. Oh, so does she really? Yeah. The African American one? Yeah, Sully. 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 Shout out to Sully. Something like that. I don't, I Shout don't know. Shout out to Sully. Um, yeah. yeah, Kelsey Ray. Uh, so I, I said I wanted to print out Women of Power and put them in uh, my daughter's room. Kelsey Ray will be on, 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 <laughs> on, one, of those, on one of those. Harriet Tubman, Amelia Earhart, <laughs> and Kelsey <laughs> Ray. That and the uh, the, <laughs> the uh, meth cooking Oompa Loompa from the uh, oh Willy yes Wonka experience. yes yes I forgot about her I uh, how could we how could we forget about her yeah we'll have to come up with a list of of women in power because I I think Harriet Tubman Amelia Earhart's a little overplayed we need new women of power right <laughs> right, right Harriet Tubman gets a hundred dollar bill what does what does Kelsey Ray get other than my 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 what my uh, hard earned money. Right? Yeah. I've spent more money on Kelsey Ray's room than anybody else. Yeah, yeah. It, it gets to the point, guys, when when I get the notification that Kelsey Ray is live, I immediately send a group text to Darren and, and Chris. And I'm like, here's our girl. And Darren um, hates it. And then Darren all of a sudden, he starts it. sending it. All of a sudden, he, he's now on the Kelsey Ray train. Uh, we we <laughs> have to come up with like a fan fan names for her. Like, uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Like we, we Taylor will Swift out. or Swifties. Well, well what, are, what are we? Uh, Ragers. Ray, Ray, Raging. Raging. Oh, Kelsey Ragers. Kelsey Ragers. I, I love, love that. that. It's pretty great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're all Kelsey Ragers over here. I love that, actually. <laughs> we'll put on a shirt. Make money off of her. Yeah, right. <laughs> right next to the uh, hot indie, uh, indie Justin shirts. That yeah, I'm I love there. making these really obscure people famous. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, like Steve Joyner. Oh um, <laughs> my goodness! <laughs> well, maybe we'll do an update on that later. Yeah. But Chris, uh, you haven't had much going on this week, so I'll move over to uh, to Nick. No, Chris, how's your week going? <laughs> take wow. it from the top. We'll take it from the top. We'll take it from the top. It was a stormy night. Emily and I were bored. Picture. It. I put on a little. <laughs> maybe we'll very fast forward light. a little bit. Maybe we'll fast forward a little bit. <laughs> So, uh, Mother's Day That's what was she, she was like, was that a fast forward or yeah. was that in like real time? <laughs> Mother's Day was on. Although you're the... on Zoloft, so it probably lasted a lot longer. <laughs> took three weeks. <laughs> Mother's Day was on the 11th and we had a really nice get together at our house. Uh, we had a, it was a potluck one, uh, nice little hmm. adulting hack, nice little adulting hack. If you don't feel like cooking or buying food, potluck, potluck, potluck it. Yeah. And people love potlucks. They're like, Oh. 
I got this famous pasta. Sarah starter. loves pot. <laughs> 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 Luck. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, everyone brings their best. So, and all the food's great because they only, only have to put effort into one thing, right? So it's, it's awesome. So potluck mother's day emily starts to get contractions that morning they're like braxton hicks contractions nothing crazy and then like once an hour and uh so that whole day she's not feeling great because she's nine months pregnant due date's the 18th it's the 11th so she's a week out from the due date that night around 11 o'clock she's like in a lot of pain starts going downstairs doing a little exercise ball stretches for the you know to help with the contractions i do ball stretches too <laughs> <laughs> So it was, it, she was in enough pain for her to get out of bed and go down and start doing that. And it, mind you, it's the 11th, right? Is it the 11th or the 12th? It was the 12th. It was the 12th. 12th. It's on a Sunday. Yeah, it was, uh, it was the 12th. So she goes down at 11 o'clock and, and it hit me. I was like, I should probably start packing. And stop For drinking. the hospital. And uh, thank goodness I stopped drinking. At the, the Wednesday episode uh before the um before mother's day was my last hurrah of so just, i made a difference i made uh, yes, a difference in your yes life. yeah and Maybe emily saying drinking. this is the last time you're drinking heavily because <laughs> you didn't tell her labor is more of a state of mind and it'll be okay yeah. you can just i uh, wait till you sober up <laughs> i may have i may have i may have said that i forget no definitely didn't say that so i was like i should start packing so i because i tried to go back to sleep i was like oh, i'm tired i'm gonna go to sleep I was like, man, I, I don't want to be woken up at midnight saying we're going to the hospital. So went out to my car, started clearing my car out. I started packing my hospital bag, which, put it next to hers that was packed for like the last month, right? And uh, I try to get, get some sleep. An hour and a half goes by, and she's doing this app, counting the contractions. And it just kept, it keeps going. It keeps, like, it because once your contractions get, like, uh, every five minutes or like a minute minutes or longer. Or less. Yeah. You're supposed to go to the hospital. So she was tracking them and the notification kept coming up. Go to the hospital. Go to the hospital. So she calls the hospital. Jesus. Wow. Back in my day, we we had an abacus and we were <laughs> counting with the abacus, the contractions. And it was like, should we go to the hospital? I don't know. The, uh, the horse drawn wagon may take us a while to get there. <laughs> so, so she calls the on call OB and they're like, oh, give it another hour. I was like, uh, like, she, like, Emily's in a lot of pain. They like, want I, you to I, stay I, home. Honestly, they want you to be comfortable and stay home as long as possible. But it's funny because they they do, and they, but they also tell you once you get contractions, one minute or longer, five minutes apart, come on in. Right? It's more so of an early warning. So, but it was like it was bad enough pain to the point where like she couldn't do anything. Like, it was really bad. So it was like taking her breath away. So we went to the hospital. They check her out. She's one centimeter dilated. That's, that's nothing. That's it. Let's go back home. And they were like, yeah, we'll probably send you back home if it's less than four or something. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was one. And she's in so much pain, like so much pain. I'm like, I don't know how we're going to go back home when she's in this much pain. So they put the baby monitor and the contraction monitor on. And she was having some pretty intense contractions. I'm like Googling, like, what is this measurements <laughs> and this and that? And she was like having labor intense contractions. But only dilated a centimeter so the baby's heart rate was staying at like 130 and they like to see every half hour i think an acceleration and it was like 40 minutes and there was no acceleration so they're like uh listen we only have one way to track the baby and it's the heart rate and if they don't we don't get an acceleration we'll probably admit you and and you'll, we'll get you induced so that didn't no create an anxiety attack for you at all, did it? <laughs> so, well, it, at first, I was a little concerned when they when they're like, "All right, we're going to induce you." She has there's been no acceleration because they gave Emily juice. She drank the juice, which wakes the baby up. Did nothing. So, <laughs> as soon as they leave the room, after they said we're going to induce you, they leave the room to put in the orders. The acceleration comes. <laughs> 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 so the baby was fine. It was just uh, she was just like knocked out asleep. So, uh, she gets induced, uh, Sunday night, all day, Monday, she's in labor Just all day, Monday. That was a long labor because mm -hmm. I was going to stay <sighs> awake and I'm glad I didn't because it wasn't until like what, two or three in the morning on the, yeah. yeah. I think so I texted you, you at like 1130 at night and I'm like. I, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> 24 hours from when yeah. you said they're inducing. And, and yep. if you got there at 11. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, so she was in labor for um, a little over 24 hours. 
And I'll tell you, I have a newfound respect for, I will never say a bad thing about a woman ever again, <laughs> ever, even <laughs> Hillary Clinton, like nothing. <laughs> Like there is, like it was, I was, you know, and you know what was crazy? So that, that one, that first night we barely got any sleep and it was so hard to sleep. It was so hard to sleep because every five minutes she was getting contraction. She oh was yeah. So she was so loud. <laughs> I just could not sleep. He puts a pillow over her head. Just shut up. Yeah. Hey, quiet. <laughs> no, she got an epidural, uh, not too long after. So she was going through the contractions unmedicated and like hours later, like you can have an epidural whenever you want. She's like, please. Yes, please. So uh, the anesthesiologist came in and administered the epidural, and then they gave Emily hers, and so we were both <laughs> so we were both very comfortable. No, so it was like it was it was horrible because like I'm trying to sleep because I know I need to get rest so my anxiety doesn't spike up because I know I need to be you know sharp and you know not, not worrying. So I'm trying to get some sleep. Emily's either suffering, nothing I can do. Like I can't do anything. So I'm getting her water when she needs a wet towel, whatever she needs. The doctors were in and out, but the, the thing that sucked is the doctors would come in, check for dilation, and be like, "All right, I'll be back in about four hours." Like, oh my gosh, this happened for us. You know, t took a day. Then they have her start going on her side, her left side for like an hour, right side for an hour to reposition baby. So the baby, because the uh, the baby was kind of in a weird weird position, like her head was a little uh, like I don't know if this is a medical term, but they said it was cockeyed. Which when I texted Preach. my sister, cockeyed, uh, she's like, "I don't." I think that's a medical service. Like, that's what the doctor said. <laughs> I don't I felt very weird to Wait, text cockeye. That's what Nick calls his pee hole. Yeah. yeah. It's a cockeye. <laughs> I took a look. I was like, trust me, this is not a cockeye. <laughs> so, so they had her, they, <laughs> they had her flipping from side to side, doing all these different medical things for inducing. And she's dilating very slowly. Which is, you know, but you know what was awesome is um, we went on the 12th, which, you know, no, no, we went on the 13th because we went at like one in the morning. Yeah. And, and Emily and I was like, oh man, she's going to be born on the 13th. That kind of sucks. Like, oh, we don't want the number 13. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was yeah. like, well, this, this is fitting because I'm going to call yeah. her 13. <laughs> they call her 11. I'm going to call her 13. This is perfect. Yeah. So uh, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Lucky number 13. Nothing happened all day. Um, so that whole day was super long. Great food though. Hospital there had like a chef and they had like a home takeout menu. When he called, they're like room service. And I was like, oh, room service. Like it was great. Like the so, pictures you sent us, like I was very envious, like the hospital room. Like I could tell it was really nice. Like oh, you had great. like a comfortable place to, yeah, comfortable in quotations, bed to sleep on. Oh yeah. Like Pull out Sean, bed. Sean and I had to cuddle on a <laughs> sofa to try to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was <laughs> very accommodating. People travel to this hospital to have their babies there, which I don't know how you could travel having contractions because that was insane. But anyway, so Monday's did, a blur. Question, did you make her yes. drive to the hospital? Oh, yeah, I was too I, like, I was I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> I felt like you were way too nervous. <laughs> yeah, I was a nervous wreck. She drove. <laughs> I called my mom. She took us. She took us in. <laughs> Are you serious? No, no, no. I'm not serious. <laughs> because, because I could see that. <laughs> I could see that. I could totally no, see. I, Listen, no. <laughs> when when Darren was born, I was, mind you, I was 20 years old. I was not mentally prepared for that. I made my dad stay in the room. I was like, I need. I don't know that I can handle this. She's going to start yelling at me. Um, I I can't deal with this. And I was so scared because again, I'm a 20 year old kid. It took me a day and a half to actually hold Darren for the first time <laughs> I, because I never held a baby before. Damn. I, it's, it's, it is, it is and you're probably like, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah, so, that didn't end until 24. And then I was like, okay, now we can hang <laughs> I, I did, I did drive and I was, I was like, I wanted to get there. So it's one, one in the morning or 1230, whatever time it was. And we pull up to like a red light. And I put my flash on, just went right through. And she's like, please, please stop. Like, I was like, I'm like, I do not want anything, any accidents to happen. Yeah. He's like, I just got this, uh, the, the car detailed. I don't need anything to happen. <laughs> but so, the thing is, uh, is if you would have gotten pulled over, they would have seen her. You would have said she's oh, in labor. Yeah, they yeah, would have given yeah, you an escort. Yeah. It would have been fine. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. So we get to the hospital. I told you that. Sorry. So it's, it's flash fast forward to the next day. It's, it's now Monday all day. Nothing happens. I got like one hour of sleep that night. So, or I got a few hours that night. No, I didn't sleep at all that day, actually, because we got there Sunday night, didn't sleep at all. Took maybe a nap or so on Monday. So Monday night comes and I'm exhausted. Emily's exhausted. I, uh, 
I, I close my eyes on the couch at like, you know, 11 o'clock at night. And then I get woken up out of a deep sleep at 1.30 in the morning. And it wasn't our usual nurse. It was another nurse because the one nurse was on lunch break, which I still don't understand because it was 1 in the morning. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> well, their shift a, starts at 7 p.m. So, yeah. So why are you having lunch? Can, can you call it like a breakfast break or a <laughs> snack break? Like, they have to mentally break? prepare themselves the to just call day. it. Yeah. It's yeah I don't know. It's, you know, it's, it's some lunch break, whatever. It's another one's in there. They're flipping Emily. And I wake up and there's two more nurses in there. There's three of them all flipping Emily. I'm like, this, like, maybe she just needs some help because this woman's not the nurse that was here. And then all of a sudden, like 10 nurses come into the room. At one point, there was a dozen nurses and they come rushing into the room. And not mind you, I, I will, I'm woken up out of a deep sleep. So I am like, my heart's racing. A bunch of nurses are coming in. It's already been a grueling day. Um, and... I just, my, the first thing out of my mouth is why, why are there so many people in here? And they look at me and she was like, oh, she said, we help, we help every, everyone helps when they need help. I was like, uh, with, with what? Like, what is going on? And all I hear is get the oxygen. And they, they put an oxygen mask on Emily. I look over, she's on all fours. They're like, we were looking for the heartbeat. I look at the heart rate monitor and the baby's heart rate, uh, which is supposed to be like 120 to 150 on average, went dropped down to uh, 60 and then nothing. I'm looking at the heart rate monitor, no heartbeat. So I am like, I, I just feel just like a, a wave go from my head to, to my toes of just like, I, I was like, I went into a panic. Nothing I can do, right? They didn't prepare you that this is common. Oh, no, not mm. at all. Not at all. And I'll explain what happened at the end. But so I start getting dressed. I'm like, okay, well, this is, we're have to, this is going to be an emergency C-section. So I start, I put my sweatshirt on, put my shoes on, like I'm ready to go to the operating room. <laughs> And they're like, we're looking for the heartbeat, looking for the heartbeat. And then all of a sudden I start to hear, I said, is that the heartbeat? They're like, yeah, that's it. We found it. And I was like, is this like, what, what just happened? And they're like, uh, like, oh, this is super common. <laughs> like, why, why do you need a dozen nurses in here then? I think they're all just bored. It's one thirty in the morning. I thought I lost my baby. Like it was this, I kid you not. I was like, this is, this is what it's like to be a parent. This is like yeah. just constant worrying. Mm -hmm. yes. And it was the most terrifying. I, I, I kid you not. This was the most, it was the scariest moment of my life. Cause I had no idea what was going on. I, 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 all I know is the monitor doesn't show a heartbeat and they're saying we need to find the, we're looking for the heartbeat. So what happened was the baby didn't like when she got flipped on one side and earlier when she flipped on one side, didn't like it. Maybe the umbilical cord was being, you know, smushed or something. Right. And so they didn't put her on that side. Well, this nurse put her on that side heart rate fell they took the heart monitors off and that's why the screen didn't show a heart rate <laughs> it's like uh was it plugged in so i had no idea that that's why and now i'm thinking like oh my gosh my baby's heartbeat didn't beat for like five minutes is that gonna be bad like is that, i don't think that's good and then they described to me like yeah you know how like when you have a hose and then you just put it in half and then the water stops Yes, probably that might have been what happened. I was like, "Oh, I, that doesn't sound healthy." But it just turns out it was like nothing. Just not plugged in. So it's now one thirty in the morning, <laughs> and I can't sleep now. I was like, "Let's just get this baby out, please, please." And uh, two fifty eight. No, let's say let's we'll take it back a little bit. Two thirty five. Uh, they they check and they're like, "All right, we're gonna start pushing." Fifteen minutes later, well, well let's say fourteen minutes later. Uh, Emily's pushing and, um, and the doctor goes, oh, she has some hair. And I was like, you can see her head. I like, just started <laughs> bawling my eyes out. <laughs> just the notion that this baby, after the traumatizing experience I had like an hour and a half before hearing that the baby was like almost in our arms was like the, the best feeling in the world. And I just started crying already. And, um, God, you're a pussy. And, <laughs> And it only took her 15 minutes to push. Then thank That's goodness. That's not bad at all. Hey, thank goodness, because 24 hours of labor, at least it was an easy, yeah. you know, yeah. process that way. So It was an easy process, <sighs> yes. I'm sure I'm sure Emily would uh, <laughs> The easiest it could be. Easiest it could be. No, <laughs> right. I'll, I'll talk about Emily in a second. But so the feeling that I don't think I will, will ever leave me is they take the baby 
And they, you know, I cut the cord, which was cool. I didn't cut on the first try, unfortunately. I did miss a piece. I did go back for a double, Jesus, double get step. It together. Yeah, I'm, and I'm like holding scissors near a newborn baby was not the, was not the, the greatest <laughs> thing for me after this the night that I had. So um, they put the baby on Emily's chest and just the, the from from the moment that the baby was put on her chest, she 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 was looking at me. Her eye was her eye because the other eye was like stuck shut. Her one eye was. Uh, just staring at me and it was like oh my gosh like it was like it, it's just it's a miracle that's the only way to describe it it's like magic um that this baby was inside her and it comes out it's it's living breathing just staring right back i, I will never forget that feeling and um you will in middle school the first time she says that she hates you <laughs> <laughs> but uh so she comes out and she's covered in birth man uh covered in birth like nothing can prepare you for that right. and so you know i said uh you know my, my biggest fear is having an ugly baby and she comes out and her head looked like it was uh she looked like she could be a uh, star next to uh, john belushi and coneheads let's just say that mm -hmm. John Belushi was never in Coneheads. Jim Belushi? Neither. No, it was John Goodman. Dan no, I think it was John Belushi. Dan, Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> I knew it was one of the guys from Ghostbusters. Belushi was not in Ghostbusters he either. But it's wrong. I, think he, I think he auditioned. I think he auditioned for it. <laughs> so they take the baby off of Emily's chest and they bring her over to the little table to clean her up. And, uh, and, like, Would you, uh, and they, they call me, hey, you want to take a picture? And I go over like real gingery and I'm like looking at the baby. I was like, not really. Like, I, like, I don't like this is like, listen, this was a beautiful experience. Beautiful. I, this is just, I don't know if I want to remember this part. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like looking down at her head's like three feet long. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, I'm thinking like, we're going to have need, like custom hats for this baby. It's like, like I don't know. The like, baby's head is taller for, than for, Chris. Forget the hat. I'm going to have to put a sock on her head. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going to. So they hold her up for, for the, like next to like the screen. Like, here you go. Take a picture. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, taking the pictures. And she starts, her eyes, her face is super swollen. Her head is three feet long. And she's staring. I was like, okay, say cheese. Like, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> and, then she, and, then, and then she starts screaming. And I was like, oh man, this is even more, I'm more unflattering. Like, these are photos that will never surface. Like, I will, I, 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 and I said, and the funny thing is like, I sent them the grandparents. I was like, oh my gosh, look at this thing. Like, look at this picture. And they were like, oh my gosh, it's so cute. I was like, really? Like, I mean, she's much cuter today. <laughs> so... <laughs> So anyway, the first thing I asked the doctors, I was like, yeah, so like, is that, is the head thing, like, is that, is that <laughs> normal? Know. Is that normal? Like, oh yeah, it'll go back by, you know, in a couple of days. Like, oh my gosh, thank goodness. <laughs> and then, and then, like, and her face was all swollen. That's going to go down too. I was like, oh, okay. Okay. So, and they put a hat on her and she looked so cute in the hat because it covered oh. her, it covered two feet of her head. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I, I kid you not, like she, you put the hat on her and I could only see her eyes and I saw me looking back at me and it was the weirdest thing ever. <clears throat> like I can see a lot of me in her. I see my grandfather who passed away years ago. I see mm -hmm. him. Yeah. It, it, it is, it is the, the coolest thing ever. Um, but yeah, no, she's, she's a cute, very, very cute baby. I'm, uh, I'm very, very happy that her head shrunk. Um, I was going to look up to see how they did those shrunken head dolls. I thought I was going to do some, do some like voodoo on her for her, her, her early years to make it shrink. But mother nature has a way at, of, of doing that. It's hard to like, I'm like crying over here. Cause I'm like, you telling the story so amazing. I didn't want to like interrupt you or anything, but also I'm like, to, to make it somewhat funny, I guess, like they don't teach you this crap. Of, Nothing. Like, how None the heads, like when they come out, like it's magic that the heads, like there's bones shifting mm -hmm. in the pieces eventually. And that's Crazy. why they say to like, be careful yep. with their heads and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. It's just like, we watched Piper's birth and she came out in two and a half pushes. Wow. And, like you're just bringing back so many memories of that. And it's just, it, it it's amazing. But that afterbirth crap that remind me I'm gay. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, "No." I the, the first thing that happened after all that, I was like, "Should I text Sean?" I think. I, I mean, I wonder if I wonder if Nick's still up. I wonder if these guys want to. <laughs> no, but it was. Uh, I will. Uh, I will. Ha I have a new. Uh, not like I, that. I didn't respect my wife, but I have a newfound respect for her. Mm -hmm. And like, she is a a fucking superhero. 
Oh my yeah. gosh. The, the, what she went through. And I just kept telling her how proud of I were proud of her I was the whole time, but like even that wasn't enough. She was like it it was it was amazing to see. It's amazing to see uh what the uh what a woman's body goes through during I I I could never do it. <laughs> I would if I if I had to get pregnant, I would be a lesbian. Like if I was a woman, <laughs> I would definitely be a lesbian. Um, and I would be the dude lesbian because I would not be able to do any of that. It was, it's just, it's crazy. It, it was insane. The whole birthing thing, by the way, did not look, did not look, didn't take a peek. Nothing. That is not my job what? that I uh, listen. I was, I, I, what, what, what is What is that going to do for me other than traumatize me? I mean, I Sean, was, and like, I, Sean and I were like, we watched it, but we, we were literally like 20 feet across the yeah. room. No, like, no, I don't no, want to no. be close to this. Like, I, I don't was, know. I, I was at Emily's face. I, I was, uh, during the whole That's a good place. Yeah. I was, I was, uh, wiping her face now with a cool rag just the whole time. And that's where I needed to be, right? That's the that's mm-hmm. the way I could help. I'm not doing anything down there, <laughs> except for except for scarring myself, maybe becoming yeah. gay. Seriously, uh, and, and like that's like how that I does turned. nothing. That would have that that's would have probably I broken think, my marriage. Uh, <laughs> like I think when I was born, I probably just opened my eyes, saw vagina, and was just like, nope. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, if I saw what was going down there, I would have been like, no, 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 no. So I just stayed up there. I stayed up there. I did my thing with the rag, cooling her down, and then uh, that was it. But so, um, so we we were in that labor delivery room, and they transferred us to the uh, to our suite. Which is oh. actually smaller than the labor delivery. Yeah, 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 their labor they room is ginormous. They, they don't huge. give. They don't give two shits about you once you're in that yeah. room. No, 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 they barely even yeah. check on you. Yeah, no, no. And well, before um, we get to all of yeah, that, go ahead, go ahead. I want to take a pause. Uh, I'd like to scr- uh, s- share my screen if I could. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Hold on. So this is Chris's birthday episode, and We're good. this year I did not, I did not get birthday messages from anybody because There's I wanted else to do a little to say about me. What's up? There's Nobody else had anything to say about you. Yeah. So I want to do something different. All uh, right. Chris, scattered through the episode are some special messages <laughs> for you. Okay. Here's the first one. Hello, Chris. It is me, your favorite Impalimpa from the Glasgow William. <laughs> I hear you're just like me. You have plenty of jelly beans, but you're also a messy bitch as well, just like me. Remember, Chris, clean up your wrappers because everyone doesn't need to deal with your mess. <sighs> my gosh, it's like talking to myself. And I hear you've had your first ever baby Oompa Loompa. Oh, this is so exciting. Oh, congratulations on your new baby Oompa Oompa. May they win the golden ticket in life as well. And that means I hope you have a fabby oompa loompa doobody doo day. And I hope you get the golden ticket as well. And congratulations on your new oompa loompa. And remember, don't be a lazy slob. <laughs> That's really her. That was really her, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I, fi- I figured you would love that. <laughs> Amazing. We have to end the episode. It's nothing's gonna get better than that. What's that? The, we have to end the episode. Nothing's gonna get better than that. <laughs> um, you know what? Let me give you one more. Okay, okay. okay. I have I have a couple of these. Hold you have on. a couple of them. I have a, I have a couple. I have a couple. Wait. So let me uh, let me give you one more. Wait, 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 wait. People were asking who was this. That was the Oompa Loompa from the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory experience in Glasgow <laughs> that went viral that we talked about. That was the with the with the uh, with the unknown, and that every, everybody knows the story. But that was the Oompa Loompa. From <laughs> was that the real that was the cooking meth? That was, was that her. the real that person? Was, that, that was really. <laughs> <that's, her. laughs> I I just I thought it was like this that Kelsey Ray lady like imitating it or something. I, I, I'm like, at first I was like, this this lady? At, at first like is this like is this like a Kelsey Ray uh, wish Kelsey Ray? And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is Glasgow royalty. All Rachel right. must have gotten a good bonus to get her. <laughs> <laughs> she was the cheapest of the ones that I got. There's more. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here here you go. Here's your next uh, birthday message. Oh my god. Hey, this is Kelsey Ray. Oh my gosh! Happy birthday! 
I hope your day is magical and you get so many gifts that you can hoard. I mean, select. Congratulations on becoming a new father and enjoy your magical day. Bear hug just for you. Oh my God! <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Kelsey Ray, that was apparently Speaking her. Speaking of Kelsey Ray, <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> you need to you need to send me all of these. Oh, I will. I will. Oh I will. God, I am saving the best one for last. <laughs> that was better than Kelsey Ray. <laughs> oh my God. And for, the, and for those of you that have no clue who she is, like me. Um, <laughs> What what do I have to do to like make a cameo for somebody? Like, can I just send them to random people now? So here's I actually had this idea, day. Nick. As I was about a week or so ago, I had job. the idea that I was going to do cameos for Chris's birthday. Oh my god! And I um I was like, wait a second, like anybody can be on cameos. I was like, what if the four of us sign up as creators on cameo? <laughs> I think that'd it. be fun. <sighs> That's the end. Oh, I get what, would you, what would you charge? Um, 69 cents. Yeah. I say like, are we worth like more than a dollar or? I think we're like at least five like, bucks. I don't know how that works. How does, how does the internet work? I charge five bucks. Five bucks <laughs> is like so, enough for five. someone to not feel bad, but also feel good. Like, oh, I'm giving this guy five bucks. He definitely needs five dollars. <laughs> Spoiler alert for a chat. It is not Eddie Deason. I did not get Eddie Deason, mm -hmm. uh, an Eddie Deason cameo. Um, Eddie Deason doesn't make good cameos. Uh, I got one for my kids uh, <laughs> and my my niece and my nephew for the Polar Express night. And it was okay. It was interesting. <laughs> He's reading from a script. He was reading from a script that Steve made. Yeah. <laughs> um, but now with the Steve saga, it makes more sense why Eddie was blinking so much. In <laughs> He's like, <laughs> help me. <laughs> Was sending Morse code. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, you guys ready for travels and tribulations? Absolutely. Uh, it's yes. back. Orville and Wilbur Wright are perhaps most famous for the invention of the airplane in 1907. However, a few folks know that they originally started at a bicycle shop in Dayton, Ohio, which is where I am right now. Oh. However, when they decided to create the airplane, they left behind their bicycle business. Much like an interview with Claudia Wells or anybody from Full House. <laughs> what shall it bring when the gentleman rings on travels and tribulations? What's going on, no new friends gang? As I mentioned, I'm at the Wright Brothers Bicycle Shop today. Interestingly, I actually am unable to ride a bicycle, and because of that, I figured I would list off hmm. things that some of you guys on the show can't do either. Nope. For example, okay. Sarah can't have a relaxing Wednesday morning, ever. <laughs> Nick can't take a work trip without having to record some kind of segment for Move True. I'm Gay. True. Chris is unable to not laugh at everything that happens in any of these segments like Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> and Chris can't listen to Arkham Asylum Comics, the podcast. And my least favorite person on this show is unable to let me host an episode without him showing up even though he wasn't supposed to. It's an impossible challenge for him. Speaking of people related to No New Friends, Game Master Ryan is unable to count, seeing as he's from North Carolina, <laughs> and Remy is not able to not copy other shows. <laughs> Speaking of which, that's right, you're listening to Scotty's Square Table. My name is Scotty, and I am joined by my dangerous co-host, Dane. Dane, how you doing? Hey now, I'm doing real well. How about yourself, Scotty? <laughs> I am doing so, so well. That's good to now, hear. That's good to hear. Dane, we're going to change things up a little bit on this show tonight. We're going <laughs> to be adding in some things from other shows. For example, Diz His, they've got that great Niels Wants to Know segment. They've got somebody mm. who calls in, asks them questions they get to answer. You have any ideas on how we can switch that up, Dane, a little bit, add that to our show? Maybe somebody calls in. For a segment, right? Because it has to be a segment. Um, and because we have a co-host from New Jersey, he does Jersey Man. 
and maybe Florida man because the Florida based podcast and those two states are really crazy. You're just Jersey man versus Florida man. We find a really crazy news article and we try to guess like which one it is. How about that? Okay. I love it. I love it. It it takes so much from Niels wants to know, but I love it. Let's just copy that over. I, love it. I did take that from Niels wants. This to know. also has that great travel update from Nick from Sandpiper Vacations. Any ideas on how we can add that to Scotty's square table? Wait. He can. Do you want him to sponsor the show? Wait. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Nick started doing Revy's round table. Here first. These notes at the end of the show where Mark McKay recaps the show. He adds in some funny quips, some funny lines. Anyways, I mean, he could do something that. like that. Could do something like the exact same thing. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Let's a guy named Chris. Then we could do some nice alliteration in there. <laughs> We could do that. We can see if Christian Cardozo wants to come on or something. Um, <laughs> yes, Christian Cardozo's Cliff Notes. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. What about the quick fire, quick facts from Diz His, the Disney History Podcast? What if, what if there was a host that only showed up quickly for like an episode and then left for five episodes and then showed up again for another episode? You know, really quick? <laughs> Quick fire right there. Sometimes with some quick facts. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. That is perfect. I think we've got a great show here. So stay tuned for the next episode of Scotty's Square Table. You're listening on Spotify. Has Chris ever crashed a helicopter in a hospital? <laughs> what? <laughs> What? Oh my god! Oh boy! Oh, man. Uh, that was like a podcast and a travel updates. Go ahead, Nick. That was a podcast and a podcast. I'm like, what is? <laughs> Nick started doing travel updates here first. I think I started on uh, this is. Well, I know you. Oh yeah, you did. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So maybe I did copy this is. My bad. And then I anyway, I, I don't remember how we started. You called me. And said, hey, um, you know. I was like, your podcast is relatively good. Yeah. <laughs> Minus a certain host. But um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's how it kind of started. Yeah. Um, so, Chris, w- what I love, uh, as much as this baby has ruined my life, I love that you have a new toy in your yeah, life. Oh, that's my favorite part. Uh, um, I, I've been showing Rachel pictures and videos that you've been sending us. And I'm yeah. like, Chris is not taking this whole parenthood thing seriously at you all. You can't. You <laughs> can't. <laughs> but my, fa- my favorite was the uh, <laughs> when the baby was crying and you superimposed it in front oh, of yes. the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the the painting. The painting. Oh, I sent that to you? Yeah. 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 It was... Uh, <laughs> Immediately when she was, hold on one second, hold on one second. I can't we're gonna have to cut this. My, my Alexa will not. I have to you unplug can her. Can you, you can hear her, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Why right. does she have an I, English accent? She doesn't. She's American. I think that was just her voice. Accent. That's right. Yeah. Definitely what mine yeah, what sounds like. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, Scott's sexist and changed all his uh, uh, Alexa uh, voices to men. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so. Yeah, the minute she was born, or the day she was born, within 24 hours, I photoshopped her in, like, so many different uh, things. That was <laughs> I that, made more. That, that was that There's terrifying more. picture. No, that was a terrifying... I did... Did I send you the one of her feeding in a in a nest with the other birds? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. yeah, I'll, send, I'll send that one to you guys. Yeah, because, like, her screaming, I was like, she looks like a bird, like, screaming for, for worms. <laughs> yeah. I will send that one. I'll send that one to you guys. I that's her insane now. Um... But yeah, between that and then the, uh, I had her listen to the podcast in the first hour of her, uh, I had her listen to Kanye West, Lady Gaga, and No New Friends podcast, the first hour of her. Uh, and then, so now like, she's well, racist, anti- anti-Semitic. <laughs> she's multicultural. Well, I made you do Gaga bad. because you sent the picture and I'm like, mm, no, we can't ever be racist. Yeah. M- immediately sent the Gaga video. Yeah. Um, and, uh, no, so like, I don't even call her by her name yet like, anymore. Like, I just love nicknames. So like her name's Eliana, I call her Ellie. Right, said I was going to call her Eleven, but I've I've started calling her uh, Ms. Baggins because I, I watched oh. the first half hour of Lord of the Rings, and the uh, the Hobbit's last name is Baggins, and she's like a little Hobbit, a Yobbit, if you will, and uh, so I'm like, "Hello, Miss Baggins, how are you today?" And I just come into the room and ask her how she's doing. 
and uh hasn't really said much yet but um but yeah so like it's it, it's it the, the nicknames just progress as we go on but yeah she's she's really fun like you just do like you just like hey, poke her a little bit you like squeeze her cheeks make her smile like yeah. i'm on facetime with my mom earlier she's like oh you can, um smile for me smile so i just take her and i was like spread her cheeks <laughs> make her smile she's just fun she's you just fun. need the sun more like i love i'm obsessed with baby pictures and like i i love seeing your dadness coming out of it now because of doing those fun photo shoots we have so oh, many yeah fun, we have so many photo shoots piper and baskets and everything all the fun stuff oh, got love a good basket pick and i'm like going back through our group chat and i'm like look, trying to see trying to remember what all you sent because it's been a very long stressful week and i see the art picture and of course the very next picture we get is a message from mr scott and it's a picture of hot indy we don't care. We don't care. I want. I want baby pictures. Like we don't respond to Scott. We all respond to the baby pictures. I, well, I will. I will send you plenty. I like that Chris sent the baby picture of her in his legs, and I'm like, oh, she looks so cute. And you're like, are those Pizza Planet Crocs? <laughs> I know. Nice I zoomed in. Zoomed in. And so like nice legs. I know. It's like nice legs. Like. Oh, there's a baby. Oh my gosh, yeah, this I, baby I just sent, picture. <laughs> I just sent I just sent the picture in the group chat of her uh in the nest with the other with the other uh, oh birds. My oh my gosh. And, <laughs> like, and that's the photo that I was talking about. They're like, would you like a picture? And that's the photo. I was like, why did you do this to me? I cannot wait until she's 18 and like her 18th birthday party is gonna be like her, like that picture just posted everywhere. I, she's gonna be like the most beautiful little girl, and everyone and all everyone's ever is gonna see is just that picture just posted <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Uh, I wish the world could see this picture right now because it's <laughs> the uh, hilarious. You have the, to put it in our members. Only. I will put it on members only on Discord. Um, oh so before oh, I finish, if you whole- want to be in our members only Discord, just join our clubhouse, our Patreon, for as low as two dollars a month, and you can be in the members only or be a TikTok subscriber. Either or, paid members, members only, you get the exclusive content. I'll wrap this story up after I talk about my ha- hospital today because there's going to be a lot of updates for the rest of my life. <laughs> so, uh, so the hospital stay, we get to that room and it was cool because when my parents and my sister came, like she was only like five hours old because she was born at three in the morning. Uh, she was less than 12 hours old. I didn't come at eight o'clock cause I was sleeping. Came around noon and, um, oh man, you know what I learned so quick, so quick is People who are related to a baby, whether it be an aunt or a grandparent or a cousin or something, they just love doing stuff that you hate. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, so I get there and she's like, she needed her diaper change. I was like, hey, Britt, you want to change your diaper? She's like, I'd love to. I was like, oh, knock yourself out. And she does that. And I was like, you want to change her for the day? Like, yeah, that sounds great. So how many diapers that? have you actually changed? Oh, tons. I'm a big diaper oh. guy now. Yeah, it would have been funny if you said zero. No. Nah. She doesn't poop much, which oh. might be an issue. We do have to call the pediatrician. <laughs> but <laughs> it's been two days. <laughs> but, um, no, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, she's on like full breast milk. So it's like um, she doesn't poop much. I think it's how it works. I don't know. We're, we're, we'll find out tomorrow. Uh, this is anyway, and this is where the podcast is going to be going now. And I was super excited for you to join this club so we can talk about baby poops. <laughs> so, oh, here, so here, first baby poop story. First baby. Poop. So the, the the horrible first poop is the meconium, oh, yeah. merconium, zirconium, whatever it's called. It's black tar. Black. That's what it yeah. is. It's black tar. It's all the the stuff that they yeah. yeah. Well, in Scott's it was probably different. I'm sure for Darren, but he he wasn't in the room. He wasn't in the room for that either. I'm sure. So, so uh, she didn't. She waited to poop for like a day, and it was the middle of the night. And the nurse comes in. She's like, "Would you like me to check her diaper for you?" I was like, "Why are you even asking? Are you serious?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say us. It's, <laughs> it's VIP service at the hospital. I was like, I was like, how much? Like, it's, this is a. This is a complimentary service. Well, we're going to bill your insurance seven thousand dollars for this for this diaper change, but for you, it's free. So, so I was like, "Yeah, please." And she opens up. She's like, "Oh, here's the here's the meconium poop." I was like, "Oh, it's like, oh, what a shame." Wish I I was hoping to change that one. <laughs> and she just she she t- literally took that shit and just like made it look like uh, she was a pro and uh, wiped her down and everything. And I did. I, I was like, "Hey, can you not? You know, can I just take a peek real quick?" And I took a peek, and it was definitely black shit it was it was terrifying it looked like uh it looked like something from a horror movie that should have been moving like it did not look like a poop 
So like I was like, Venom. how could something this cute yeah, look like Venom? <laughs> <laughs> I actually put my hand in it thinking that I'd get <laughs> the symbiote. <laughs> I just, all I got was pink eye. But... <laughs> smelly fingers <laughs> it's actually still my fingernails it's disgusting <laughs> so um so she cleaned that up and then like every time like i'd call it like three and then we're like hey could you swaddle her real quick for me <laughs> <laughs> i press like the emergency call button because i didn't know how else to call them oh, so yeah. i was like just like bing, 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 bing. because we can't swaddle them like the nurses do no, like no, we no. try and have. it's like this falling apart burrito they do it uh, it's like professionally done like it's oh, like, like they work like this, it's like, like they worked at chipotle like for years like, exactly. I shot my first day at Chipotle. I'm like, really? how's this been? <laughs> Sandwich artist. Yeah. So, so I, uh, so I, I tried I to did tell a nurse that I said, I miss, I think you missed your calling. You probably should have worked at Subway instead of being a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> I, tr- I tried to swaddle her and then she's, she's so damn strong and she loves her hands. She's like fighting out of it. She's like, and, and like, she's like, her hands get up and then like, and then like <laughs> the blanket was like covering like her bottom, like her chin. And I was like, oh my gosh, is she going to suffocate? Like, I'm like looking at this and I'm like thinking like, I, I can't go to sleep. 45 minutes. I'm like swaddling, re-swaddling. Then she farts. I'm like, oh my gosh, did she poop? I check her diaper. No, no, no poop. And then I swaddle her again, tried to swaddle her again. Again, she moves. She, her arm is out now. So I just called the little, the little emergency button. I was like, hey, you know, could you, I called her directly. I was like, hey, could you just like come and swaddle my baby real quick? And she's like, oh yeah, of course. And they come in and they like, just like, boom, boom, boom. And um, what I learned from the nurses that that um, gave me the most confidence was how rough they are with the babies. Because mm-hmm. like I think I'm gonna break the baby, right? right. I'm dressing mm-hmm. her, and it takes me 15 minutes to put a onesie on because yeah, I was like, oh, I don't want to break her. They, yeah, yeah. Like, Here, so catch. she she um, she literally choke slammed my baby to put her in the onesie. <laughs> and and, and it's uh, a geet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I started just eating her arms right through her little <laughs> holes in the in the onesies. And, um, and now I can dress the baby very, relatively quickly. Uh, but what an experience. So they said, um, they're like, listen, the OB will tell you, you can go home tomorrow because she was born Tuesday really early. Like you can go home Wednesday, like, but you can stay Thursday. You know, we're staying. You know, we're definitely staying <laughs> three cooked meals a day. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that was like good meals. It's like a deluxe resort at Disney world. Yeah. Nurse Chris on is call. Like, uh, yeah. And it's my day to cook. So yeah, we're staying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scott, how much you pay for that? Uh, that little, uh, that little, uh, resort in Jamaica. I got that for free. What's, <laughs> um, well, insurance paid for it. Yeah, it was like seventy thousand dollars, but I didn't pay a dollar. <laughs> well, um, in the next eighteen years, but yeah, in the yeah, next eighteen yeah. years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she's great for content, so that evens it out. So yeah, so like, no, we're not leaving here. We're staying the extra day. It sucked coming home. We were depressed. We come home. First of all, Emily's in the back seat now, so it's like I'm like mm-hmm. chauffeuring her around, I'm driving Miss Daisy. So no more roadhead, Miss, Mrs. Daisy's. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm driving. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I was wondering Alex, at what that. I was wondering at what point like we can make jokes about a baby, but like still incorporate <laughs> sexual activities or adulting yep. content. This and this, this is, is this is uh, <laughs> Scott went there first. So thank uh, you. Thank <laughs> goodness I, I, for I seal. <laughs> thank goodness for Velcro swaddles. By the way. Uh, mm. Shout out! Shout out to Ryan from Jersey Man versus Florida Man, who sent me uh, the most amazing little care package. For, for I'll tell you what he sent me in a second. It's hilarious, but he sent the baby like all these Winnie the Pooh things. That's Emily's favorite uh, favorite Disney character, and he sent me like these Winnie the, amazing Winnie the Pooh swaddles that Emily wanted mm-hmm. to buy but could never find in her size, like for newborn. So thank you so much, Ryan. And Emily's size or the baby's size. And <laughs> <laughs> so and then so i go through all the baby stuff and then there's this white envelope and it says for chris in quotes this is waterproof and i open it up and it is my all-time favorite pokemon card etched into stainless steel oh that's cool yeah he he custom made me a he because he asked me a while ago my favorite pokemon card was and i i forgot all about it and he, uh, he cussed, I was, I'll put a picture in discord. It is, it made me tear up because I was like, it was one of those thoughtful gifts that anyone's ever given me. And the, the whole waterproof thing because of me spilling the wine on my $100 <laughs> Pokemon card. 
and it is like i cherish that thing it is the one of the coolest uh things that i own it's um but uh th- thank you so much ryan that was super nice of you ryan and actually the, has baby a stuff heart. Is cool too yeah the baby stuff was cool too <laughs> <laughs> but That's yeah thank cool. goodness for velcro swaddles um and and also thank goodness i talked to nick about this um he asked me if i was going to use like an outlet or anything and i did not get the outlet i got this thing called a nan and it's this camera that you put a band around the baby's uh torso and it, it senses them breathing mm-hmm. so at the hospital that was one of my biggest concerns was like i hope i hope the, the the swaddle doesn't cover her face and that's why i had the nurse's swaddle at home i come i put this band on her and the, the thing just watches her breathe all night i, I if she doesn't breathe it sets yeah. off like an alarm like it scares everybody the yeah. technology with baby stuff anymore is just it's so amazing it's like i remember my mom like kind of like she's in all of everything. She's like, we didn't have car seats for you guys when your baby would just be <laughs> on the right? floor. Like, yeah. Like exactly. it's so, it's so crazy to see how much has evolved over time, even in the past six years. Cause we had, we just had the outlets and that was the new technology yeah. that was yep. helpful for us mentally as well. Too. Sure. Um, and as well for the baby, but it's insane. Um, now- so can I, can I cut in real quick? Actually. Absolutely. Move. I'm gay. Nick's on the mic, so it's time to take notice. And if you don't like it, that's homophobic. Stay the hell out of his way. Move, I'm gay. Well, I figured if I didn't cut in here at some point, Chris would probably just go on for an entire hour Thank talking you. about this damn I baby. Yeah, I um, right. No, I'm just kidding. I love her. She's <laughs> freaking adorable. Um, we haven't talked about the fact that I just got back from vacation. So right. So, so Welcome back. So, yeah. Probably talking about that last episode when you landed. Uh, well, there's supposed to be a last episode, and then you decided to have a baby last week, so yeah, we had to cancel really the sorry. episode recording. Oh, so, um, so here we are, a week and a half later, and my skin is peeling because Sean and I literally got s- so burnt on our vacation. Um, we got back from the Royal Caribbean Icon of the Seas. It was a really different experience this time as I talked, I think before about, I got invited on Icon of the Seas on a preview sailing. Um, so that preview sailing, it was a three night cruise and essentially it was a work trip. And a lot of people don't understand that my job is going on these trips. It's work. It's a lot of work seeing it. From Let me this- ask you a question. When you're on these work trips, mm-hmm, do you get mm-hmm. to drink? Yeah. On that one, they do you get to see the show? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you get to go to the pool? We did, but we didn't go. But you could have. If I had time, maybe. It's a vacation. Scott, you want to stop I being such a hoe? I did go on the water slides on that trip, so. Yeah, you, and there you go. Hoe. Um, it was a lot of work. Vibe. It was a lot of work last time. We didn't get f- the full experience because stuff was still in testing. Um, the food was still, they're working out all the kinks on the food and making it perfect based on guest experience and reactions. Um, so this time we. We spent the entire seven day cruise wanting to focus our energy on Piper. And I I love talking about this because you are a new dad, Chris, and you'll mm. kind of see like we felt Sean and I this past five I don't even know what month it is anymore, this past year of 2024, 2020, I don't know what year. Um we've been so busy and involved in so much work and health issues and this and that that we felt like we neglected time with Piper. So we spent this time focusing on her and we made this cruise really all around her. And I think you'll see that in different trips and stuff coming up, even um, going to the movies or something like that. Like we, we stayed in the Surfside area, which is the family area on the ship. And I think I went live stream and Scott was, I think you were watching as well too. Yes. And you're just like, how is this even a ship? It was incredible. <laughs> like, incredible. This ship is ginormous. And like feeling it in real life and be able to experience it with our daughter, I'm like, I'm worried. I'm like, I, we're going to lose her. It's going to take like eight years to find her because the <laughs> ship is so ginormous. <laughs> um, but and when you get to, when the kids get to middle school, you pray that you lose them on a <laughs> yeah. ship. Uh, yeah. There, there got to a point, like we stayed in the Surfside area, which is the family neighborhood and it's designed for kids that age range. Um, we had awesome, there was a carousel literally outside of our window and she went on it probably 40 times. Um, there is water slides and everything. Um, 
back there, like little kitty slides, nothing super huge and fancy. There's a nice little buffet as well, too, which was perfect for us because she's a picky eater. She only likes chicken nuggets, french fries, pizza. Um, but they had really nice, they had dino chicken nuggets there, guys. <laughs> oh. Like, yeah. On a wow. cruise ship, dino chicken nuggets. So we found out this cruise ship has probably eight different varieties of chicken nuggets. Um, <laughs> that's how big the ship is. That's my kind of ship. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a hot dog cart right outside of our room as well, too, which um, I spent a lot of time there. Um, There's one inside your room, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's say, and then he about. also ate yeah. the... Uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> um, but speaking of shit, um, we had some issues on our cruise. So this cruise ship had, I, I think it has seven pools on board and like That's it? six water slides. For seven thousand people, we went to the That's pool. A thousand people per pool. Th- thanks for doing math because yeah, I well, that was math. <laughs> I was not gonna try. Um, we went to the big the big pool the one day with Piper because she loves swimming and it's closed. Oh, um, the biggest pool in the ship. So we're like, okay, let's go try back in the k- little kitty pool area. We go back there. It's closed. So I look at on our Facebook group for our sailing, and th- three of the four pool or three of the seven pools are closed because somebody took a shit in them. Oh. At the same time, I, I don't know if it was. Seven. I don't know if it was that same time. It basically t- like, they said the it takes about four pool. hours for them to drain everything, scrub it down, and refill the pools. That's like a terrorist attack. Ship. That sounds coordinated. Uh, they are very <laughs> intense. On this I think cruise. That, that may be a little bit of an overkill. That, that's what we thought too. I'm like, I've never experienced this before on any of my 33 cruises I've been on you, now, where pull, a pool's been closed. You pull the poop out. If you feel like you need to drain the water, drain the water, refill it. Yeah. All this scrub, like the chlorine kills it. I'm like, we've been through COVID at this point. Just fill it up. There's literally 7,000 people trying to use three pools at this point. So I'd swim in a shit pool at that point. Yeah. Just leave leave it. I'll go down and grab it. Right. Just give me some gloves. Let me get, let me take care of it. It's chlorinated. Yeah, so this this wasn't just one day. This was literally probably six of the seven days that we were on this ship. What? Where what? Multiple poles were closed due to um, poop or somebody vomiting. Oh. So I don't know. We don't know what was happening. There's. They said there was twelve hundred kids on board our sailing, which was actually a low number. Normally, there's so there's about. Uh, twenty four hundred to like three thousand. They're gonna kids have to start putting signs. Please do not poop in this. In yeah, the pool. like yeah. I don't know. Like there's a lot of kids in there that should be. In, so Just Chris, make sure there's pictures for Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you cruise with Al Qaeda, Nick. <laughs> Maybe it was the most odd sailing that we've ever had in that sense. And like all of our Facebook pages, just people are arguing like the kids shouldn't be in the pool with swimsuits without swim diapers. Which yes, that's the the role is. If you should have a swim diaper on, and you can't even use a pool with a swim diaper, so I think people were trying to break the rule by just putting their kid in a freaking swimsuit and saying, "Oh, my kid can swim." They weren't potty trained, mm. so it was just a nightmare after nightmare every single day. And I don't like to complain about my experiences often. Like the uh, there's flaws in every vacation I've been on. Um, this one was a huge one, and unfortunately, it didn't get fixed. And the their response was, "There's four other pools." So do the math now, Scott. <laughs> at seven thousand people, four pools. But mind you, these pools are tiny. Like, right. you, I think it's a capacity of twenty eight. Yeah, you're getting now to almost two thousand per pool. So yeah, it was it was a bit intense, um, but we did have an amazing time overall. We were trying to, and that's the thing too is there was an adults only pool, and we're trying to get oh. time away from Piper. So we're like, Piper, go to the kids club for a little bit. But she was just very latched on to us pretty much the entire cruise, so we Aww. didn't really get a break. Um, but I don't regret it because I had that amazing time with her and building those memories with her. That's um, these are the moments now that she's building those memories with us that are going to last lifetimes. Want to make sure they're obviously they're positive. Um, I don't want to be an asshole dad like Scott or anything, but um, 
It's true. So yeah, but um, our our cruise is great. We went um, on an awesome excursion in St. Martin, so we have an awesome. Um, we're trying to do more experiences as well too to let my clients know about um, those excursions. So we did one where Sean um, sat on the sun and was peeling like seven oh, layers no. of skin. It was very rough. He sat on the sun. Basically, the son of who? So <laughs> <laughs> he was eighteen. Uh, <laughs> to be fair, um, so let me ask you guys a question. When you go swimming, at what point do you put sunscreen on? Uh, oh, before I leave the house, like mm-hmm. eighteen thousand times. I'm yeah. I am so white. I'm a sunscreen. Uh, yeah, yeah. I will never. apply, reapply, never. Reapply. Yeah, never. Sarah, you're also, a, yeah. I don't no, go out in the sun. I stay I just, in the shade. I, I hope one day that I'll tan instead of burn. <laughs> <laughs> like this will be the day. This will be the time. <laughs> it hurts always. And I'm, uh, unfortunately, I'm the planner in our family. Um, no. So I, I put my sunscreen on right in the cabin before we leave. I make sure Piper's is on. I'm an adult. Sean's an adult. <laughs> he doesn't put it on until we get to the catamaran. Not only we get to the catamaran, five seconds before he jumps in the water. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just... Beads the, right off of do it. The, yeah, do the math there. It, it didn't stay on, so <laughs> he's not learned it's his not lesson. Math, science. <laughs> he is forty something years old now, and still doesn't know how to play sunscreen. So, if anybody wants to come here and show him, um, he might have had a little too much rum punch, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, th- that is all I have in my travel update. Thank you for listening. Oh, I do have a big announcement, actually. Oh, oh. You're gay. I am gay. Come on, guys. <laughs> um, I forgot the actual travel update I was going to update, but I wanted to tell my story about my cruise, too. So we just announced today, um, Sandpiper Vacations, we are putting together a group cruise on Royal Caribbean next summer. Um, mm. We are calling it Seas of Support. So we are f- doing a fundraiser cruise to raise money for Ronald McDonald House Charities of Central oh, Ohio. Cool. Um, so as many of you might know our story that we... Um, Sean and I had a daughter that passed away in um, 2016 when she was three months old. We stayed at the Ronald McDonald House. We learned how amazing this um, uh, place is for you to stay if you need a place to stay while your kid is in the hospital. And we, um, since Harper passed away, we decided to get back there every year. Now we have teamed up with them with Sam Piper Vacations and are doing a, we put together a group cruise. Um, so we're going to have some people on board. We're donating a portion of our proceeds back to the Ronald, Ronald McDonald House in memory of Harper. So That is amazing. Um, so yeah, yeah, and so, if you want to hear more about that story and the Ronald McDonald House and, and kind of everything that goes with it, episode 149, Okay Not to Be Okay, uh, recaps that. And that was an After Dark episode. Yeah, yeah it was a, a very touchy t- topic to talk about, and I don't want to get too sappy or anything about it. So... Um, it's Ron McDonald house means so much to us that we want to make sure we give back. So we put together the script trips for people to ex- have a fun experience, get out of the house. Um, Sean and I, our motto since she passed away is just keep swimming. So, um, we want to invite people to swim with us and take a cruise and raise money for a great cause. So you can find out uh, more information about that at sandpipervacations.com. We did just, um, go live with it today so we just set that up on the website so it's gonna be a huge thing um we are going to set up a donation as well too so if you can't go on the cruise and want to donate um we will have that on our website um here pretty soon too i love that that's so, awesome thank you and you can donate to keep scott from going <laughs> <laughs> sorry i just have to say good night to the abby who's now filling up my water because she's old enough to do uh-huh me. how many how old is she she turns 12 on monday all right so 11 more years <laughs> yeah. More years. Yeah. I can do this. And it's like now you have friends, Chris, with the like, timeline of kids. I so know. You can see the different ages and the different yeah. things. That, like, yeah. Like, it you changes. Can, you can hit me up at four years old because that's where I started. So anything <laughs> past four, I got you. But, but until expert. she reaches four, <laughs> I know nothing. Until she reaches four, I'll just take the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, are you guys ready for Jersey Man, Florida Man? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Whether flipping a fan boat or crashing a truck, these states are filled with people who suck. So it's time for us to play New Jersey Man versus Florida Man. Every week, Game Master Ryan brings us two news stories. One is from Florida, one is from Jersey. It's up to us to determine which one is which. Take it away, Ryan. Don't worry, guys. This segment won't be as long as Remy's word of the week last week. <laughs> Jesus, Remy, you went so long that your background music looped three times. Abby will be graduating college by the time she's done reading off all the words you mispronounced. Maybe Remy needs Duolingo for English. Anyways, <laughs> hey guys, this is Ryan coming to you from the No New Friends newsroom located this week at the hospital. We heard Emily was having the baby, so we all showed up. Well, everybody but Nick. Nick couldn't come because he just got off a cruise. I asked if he got any souvenirs while on the cruise. He said no, but he did get a couple pearl necklaces while on the boat. <laughs> Not really sure what he meant by that. Sarah's over there practicing her Duolingo because Lewis refuses to teach her Spanish. I swear, Lewis is the first lazy Mexican I've ever heard of. Well, he's chasing a chocolate truck, then he's running like the Border Patrol is chasing him. Scott's around here somewhere. I think Scott snuck off to find some Zoloft because he heard a friend told him he'd last longer in bed if he took it. I guess that's a side effect? I don't know. I know Chris is taking it, so I know weight loss isn't a side effect. Right? Oh, there he is over there. He's live streaming from the hospital asking for roses on TikTok. <laughs> Jesus, Scott, you've gotten soft. You're softer than Nick at the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> he just came out here and told us everything is fine. Everything Man, he looks hurt. nervous. He looks more nervous than Darren when Scott tells him he's running out real quick for some milk and cigarettes. <laughs> Darren's over there watching wrestling on the TV. Which is funny, because Scott mentioned that Hulk Hogan is his favorite wrestler. Which makes sense, because they have a lot of things in common. They're both bald, desperate for attention, approved for Medicare. And they both have one rule for dating their daughter. The doctor just came out here and told us the baby is here. He said he's never seen a baby born taller than the father. He also told us that Chris got to cut the cord. Which means he's already hung out 15 minutes longer than Scott did when Darren was born. <laughs> The doctor said after the baby was born, they had to put Chris on an IV of popsicles and ginger ale. So while I go check on how he's doing, let's get into this week's Florida Man or Jersey Man. And for our first story, a man is arrested for stabbing two women outside a gas station. And for our second story, a sheriff sues Walgreens over incident in parking lot. Okay. Not a lot to go off of here. No. Hmm. Sarah, what are your thoughts? This one's tricky. There's no drugs involved. Well, there could have been, but that's <laughs> my go-to. Um, I'm going to go with the first one with the shooting being Florida. Or right, the stabbing Nick. one. That's Wait, like... was it stabbing or shooting? <laughs> it was stabbing. Trust me, when I hear stab, it sticks with me. No pun intended. Oh, well, then you make me want to change my answer, but I'm still going to stick with it. Stabbing right. Florida. Okay, Nick. Yeah, it's a tough one there because it's stabbing and shooting, correct? I'm lost now. We don't know shooting. shooting. It was just an incident oh, at Walgreens. Oh, oh okay. So. Stabbing and an incident. An incident. Um, mm. Incident could be anything. Yeah. I feel right. like. Incident, Florida. Chris? I'm going to go stabbing New Jersey. That's just our, that's our, it's on our state flag. I'm pretty sure someone's stabbing <laughs> someone else. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with Chris. I'm gonna go stabbing uh, New Jersey and then the incident at Walgreens, Florida. So let's find out the answer. So our first story is from Florida, where a man is arrested after authorities said he chased after a mother and daughter outside of Wawa. Officers arrived on scene to find two women, a 48-year-old and a 22-year-old, had both been stabbed. One of the victims told officers that her and a third woman got in an argument with the man outside the Wawa before he threatened, saying, "I'm going to kill all three of you." This just sounds like a terrible, terrible person, and his mother probably should have just let him be a pearl necklace. So that means our second story is from New Jersey, where a sheriff is claiming in a lawsuit that he suffered painful injuries that led to permanent disability when he struck an upturned manhole cover in his car in a Walgreens parking lot. I know one member of this podcast is going to have a problem with this story because Nick has a very strict rule on covering manholes. <laughs> and in other news, a Texas couple get married in a Bucky's gas station. By the look of the pictures, looks like the mascot Beaver himself officiated the wedding. After hearing about Chris's sister's wedding, this is the second instance I've heard about somebody wanting to get married by a beady-eyed rodent. <laughs> All joking aside, before I go, I don't want to wish Chris a happy birthday. And also, I wanted to say congratulations to Chris and Emily on the birth of their daughter. I'm sure you guys are going to be fantastic parents. Just don't listen to Scott. 
<laughs> we'll talk to you next week. Thank you so much, Ryan. I feel like um, Ryan hates me this week. <laughs> <laughs> I got all the, you should have heard what I, want, I said last week. Oh, I want to. Well, that's probably why, because I wasn't here the last week. Um, I want to know what was in his search history with, with pearl necklaces right now. <laughs> you have to listen to the episode. Gosh, there was a whole conversation about pearl necklaces from last I week. I miss it. I'm sorry. I'll catch up. That's all right, Mary. I mean, Nick. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Alex got that. <laughs> So, Sarah, we found some hidden ta- – well, not really hidden. We knew we knew this about her. So, Sarah had the gimbal today at the Universal when we were live streaming on the TikTok. It's TikTok Wednesday. And, uh, and Sarah was the star today. She was great. She was great. I, I had no adult beverages in me as well. Right. I, I thought I you did. I don't know what it was. I, I thought you did. Didn't. Something got into you. Something, the, 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 something got into you. Water. You were just hydrated today. <laughs> she was just hydrated. That's yeah. exactly what it was. Scott looked at me sideways when we got to the bar and he goes, What do you want to drink? I'm like, I'll take a bottle of water. He's like, What? Wow. Yeah, I was like, Trying what? something new, guys. <laughs> I was like, I know she I didn't ask my permission to get pregnant, so it can't be that. I love that journey for you. Thanks. Uh, thanks. I got a headache last trip. week. It said that the spot was dehydration. So I decided <laughs> I was going to start drinking water for like the first time in a year. <laughs> but it was funny. She started streaming. I was immediately hungry, um, wanted to eat. And she's like, no, the views are high. We keep going. We, mar- we march on. So now she knows. She knows yeah. how crazy. Once that gimbal's in your hand, it, it's, it's over. Did I you did. get to eat, I had Scott? Fun. I did not. Hmm. He took three trips to the bar, though, so don't <laughs> don't let we him act like I. We do, we do. I know because we got to one of the one of the bars, and he said, "I'll take the the blue one." And she goes, "Bud Light," and I didn't see the look on his face, but I can imagine it because then he pointed to the gimbal, like, "Oh, you can't say that." So she, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'll take the blue one. So, <laughs> <laughs> there was there was this there was this video that went viral uh the other day there's this the biggest stream in the world his name is kai sanat and he streams on twitch just in his bedroom and he had someone on stream and they opened up a corona and started drinking it and they, he, he like he almost tackled the guy He's like, no no stop i was like this is scott every wednesday this yeah, is scott. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah we, i mean uh, well <laughs> The amount of rules that we have to deal with on the TikTok, uh, it's it's incredible. The amount of rules that Sarah has to deal with on the TikTok. That's really what <laughs> it really. is, honestly, Weez because <laughs> he's gotten used to the filter. I have not. I mean, yeah. I, I can think of like three instances today where I was like, oh, oh wait, I can't say that. Oh. Facebook, me, pulling nope. out a Scott, the, the book of face. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, what's so funny about that, Sarah, is like, I've gotten so used to, okay, the tube of you, the, the book of face, the gram of Insta, that now I'm calling everything that. I'm like, oh, let's go see the, uh, you know, the Potter of Harry. And it's like, <laughs> I don't have to say that, but it's just now become a... Uh, just you have instant. a whole new language now. It is a whole new. It's like pig Latin, but it's TikTok Latin, I guess. I find myself correcting Lewis. <laughs> He'll start to say something. I'm like, no, you can't say that. Stop. The views are going to go down. Oh my God. Because it's not me that's concerned. Although I'm concerned about how Scott's going to take it out on us. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, please don't at one point i took over the gimbal and i just remember i was like all right guys like and follow and i did the whole the whole shtick <laughs> you just rolled and your eyes it, i saw you roll your eyes <laughs> <laughs> well at one point i was like hey guys this is sarah the co-host of the no new friends podcast and i did that thing that like a kid does and i turned around and i looked at scott and i'm like is it good this is good. <laughs> <laughs> <Just lying>, okay <laughs> You're like, two thumbs up. You're doing great. Keep going. Um, Scott's just behind you taking off his belt to beat you. (laughs) (laughs) The the viewers went from like 70 something to well over 100. And I'm like, guys, look, look, we're doing great. So he left me in charge for the day. I was I was actually pretty proud of myself. Yeah, Yeah, you pretty now. It really was. You pretty much had the gimbal from Lost Continent till almost the end of Universal. I think I took yes. it back at DreamWorks. So you yes. had it from Lost Continent all the way to DreamWorks. I did. I did. That yeah. what an honor. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Aww. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's I, I'm loving like we're all learning this like 
new weird side of like content creators that the four of us have been like we've been learning it. Like, I literally live streamed on the carousel on the Royal Caribbean cruise ship one day. <laughs> I like I got down to like two viewers. I don't know what's going on. I don't I still need to figure all that crap out, but I was having so much fun. Like same thing. Like nobody's watching me and I'm just like, hey guys I'm on the carousel <laughs> on a cruise ship. No, listen, I I, I the girls had their standardized testing, their state <laughs> testing, okay? And they both got really high scores, so they wanted to go out to dinner last night. We went to Texas Roadhouse. Oh, Tell me best. why it was mm. somebody's birthday next to us. And you know they do the yeehaw. Oh, yeah. I hear Scott's <laughs> voice in my head. <laughs> 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 Tell me why I joke around with Lewis when I'm listening to like Spanish music. I call this my white girl arm that comes out. But all of a sudden I'm at Texas Roadhouse and I'm doing one of these. And <laughs> I, I didn't know what I was doing, but I, the Scott just, I, yeah, I need, to, I need to stop hanging out with you so much. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, you're gonna make them cry, I'll Sarah. See, I'll see you. I'll see you next week. I'm taking my kids out of school. I'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, from from one alcoholic to another, I want to ask you. Uh, Texas Roadhouse is one of my favorite restaurants. One because they have really good, like it's a really good chain restaurant, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But most importantly, outside the food, my my favorite drink of choice, which I'm showing to the screen, Long Island iced teas. They have three different Long Island iced teas there. Oh, wow. Hmm. Uh, you know, do you, this is, do you dabble? So I, I'm going to be so honest with you. I, Lewis looked at me yesterday and he said, you want to get a drink? And I opened it up and it pisses me off like no what other. Does? When I open up a menu, especially a drink menu, and you're not going to tell me how much the drinks are. Like, I'm not trying uh, to be cheap, but if I'm getting yeah. one for, well, kind of, but if I'm getting one for $15, I better enjoy that drink. It better yeah, be yeah, something yeah. like a nice, strong drink because I'm getting one. All right. Don't like, I don't want to be surprised when the bill comes. So I just kind of folded it back up and that I'm makes like, sense. maybe my $7 bottle of Andre will be fine when I get home. <laughs> I went there on business. So it was, uh, it was Amex's problem. Not mine. Oh, see, there you go. It, yeah. it rolls reversed. Business. Absolutely. I yeah, would try yeah. them all. <laughs> Love a good top shelf Long Island iced tea. Mm. Mm. I love when they ask you, would you like tequila, rum, vodka, gin? And you just say, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, just, <laughs> Everything. And, Long Island, and just give me a little splash of Coke just to make me feel better about myself. And then Long Island iced tea was born. Yeah. Yep. Love me a good Long Island iced tea. <laughs> All right, Chris, I would like to share my screen if oh, you don't sure. mind. Yep. Going to, uh, going there right now. You are good to go. Okay. So now we have our last birthday message for Chris. Now this I'm very not, curious, Scott. It's not going to be as funny as the other two. But it's my favorite because I think it's really cool. And I think you're really, really going to like this one. And this is the one that I'm kind of the most excited about. I'm very excited. Um, I, I've given it all this, this hype. Uh, and you're probably going to be like, eh. oh, stop. Is Steve Joyner? Right. What's that? It's not <laughs> Steve Joyner. It's not Steve, Steve Joyner. <laughs> so here we go. Okay. My heart is racing right now. I'm so really? About this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just really excited about this one. Like I said, uh, may, uh, some people may not know who it is. Um, I will though. I will know who it is. You will know who it is. Okay. We got All a right. private text about this and I don't even know. Really? <laughs> yeah. All right. So here we go. All right. Let's see. From the Philadelphia Eagles, Vince Papali. <gasps> hey, Chris, what's up, buddy? This is Vince Papali, uh, former Philadelphia Eagle and a guy from the movie Invincible. And it appears like uh, you're invincible right now. You're having a birthday. So happy birthday to you. And I think the invincibility comes because you've become a father for the first time. And uh, I know you and your wife just had a baby girl. How cool is that? Uh, you'll see a little remnant of mine up there. That's my daughter, Gabriella. She went to Syracuse and worked with the Sixers and did a lot of stuff. And I know aside from probably maybe being a Sixers, Flyers, Stories fan, you're a huge Eagles fan and uh, nothing better. So I figured I'd wear this in honor of all of us huge Eagle fans and the turf at Veteran Stadium. Outside my house, I'm in Jupiter, Florida right now. Outside my house, I have pieces of the original vet turf all over the place. <laughs> it was a nightmare. But you know what? Hey, it's a pretty cool thing. Your buddies, let's see, the No New Friends podcast uh, reached out and asked me to send this cameo out to you to wish you a very happy birthday. I have no idea what birthday it is. Well, I know you have a baby girl and, and also that you're a huge Eagles fan. 
But they did say that, uh, you know, for, we said, what are you doing for your birthday? They said, you're going to collect Pokemon cards uh, <laughs> and uh, you're going to be hoarding <laughs> and eating. Hopefully, we'll have a cocktail or two as well. But it is a beautiful thing, you know, to have a birthday and, and have that first child. I mean, that is as cool as it gets. I've got two now. i got Vinny. Vinny plays in the UFL. So if you get a chance, oh my God. Uh, check out those breakfast show boats. That's my little boy. But, you know, there's nothing better than being a father or a mother. And, you know, the dreams that you have for yourselves together, for them individually, it's so cool. And every once in a while, you know, those dreams turn into nightmares. But, you know, be there. And, uh, you know, it's amazing how fast they grow. And I can't believe it. it's like yesterday that my daughter, Gabriella, was born on New Year's Eve. And uh, here she is now announcing her engagement and talking about marriage in Philadelphia. And, oh, yeah, by the way, a huge Eagles fan. So, Chris, and to your wife, and to your baby, all the no names that I've got there, to the No New Friends podcasters, um, happy birthday to you, Chris. Uh, you are now part of an invincible team, and uh, fly, Eagles, fly, baby. It's going to be wild, you know, it'd be a decent draft, and we've got Barkley, uh, <laughs> not Charles, Quan, <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a fun, fun year. So, hey, let's go, Eagles, but more importantly, let's go and have a great time with your birthday, your birthday party, your hoarding, your Pokemon cards that you're eating and drinking. More than anything, just enjoy that beautiful baby of yours. There is nothing better than being a father. Happy birthday, Chris. Fly, goes fly. Wow. That was awesome. Scott. What's up? Wow. Th that was... I can't stop smiling. <laughs> that was... Uh, so for her... <laughs> For anyone who do doesn't know who that is, Vince Papali is, uh, he was a walk on uh, player for the Philadelphia Eagles, and they made a movie about him, v Invincible, starring Mark Wahlberg, because it was such an amazing story. He's a. It's on he's, Disney Plus. He's a, yeah, there you go. He's, uh, he lived in South Jersey. I guess he moved to Florida. So he's a big, you know, he was a big, you know, he's a big name in, in New Jersey, South Jersey area, but a huge name for the Eagles because it's this amazing, amazing story. Scott, thank you so a, much. He was a bartender. Uh, oh, you're welcome, man. That was that was so cool. The, the coolest thing about that was how genuine that message was. Like yes. he was like, yeah, it was like he was very. He kept, he kept he was repeating happy. and like, it, it, I felt like he kept extending it because he was very excited to share yeah. it with you. Yeah, yeah. He probably was, doesn't do yeah. many of many cameos. Sure. Um, because you know I. I searched Philadelphia Eagles uh -huh. uh, just to see kind of who was out there. That and I was, was like, a oh, really this cool one would be really cool. That was a really, from, seriously, Scott, from the bottom of my heart, that was like, that was super nice of you. Of Thank course, you so man. much. I wanted that to do something different really cool. this year. That was awesome. Like, that was, that made my, I cannot wait to post those uh, so that all my friends and family can see this, yeah. especially Vince Papa. That was, that was really cool. Yeah. The hardest thing, the hardest thing for me was to determine the order. That I wanted to do it because I initially that I was, was a really good last one. Yeah, I was gonna initially have Kelsey Ray last, but I was like, nah, I think he'll really, really like this. Vince <laughs> that was that was really cool. That was really cool. cool. That I'm was a perfect like order, it. and I will definitely send them to you. Thank you. That that was for, seriously that was that was amazing. That made my whole my whole life. Okay. <laughs> my whole twenty. <laughs> we'll say my whole twenty ninth. We'll say my whole twenty ninth year. I mean, hopefully the baby. I felt a little. I felt a little bad saying that. That I think a, a video of Vince Papali uh, was worth. No, but I will say that. But as soon as my daughter is um, is able to comprehend English, and as soon as she, I will. I, I'm gonna you know look in her eyes and say, "Listen, like I love you more than anything in the world. The day you were born was the best day of my life." only below the day that the Philadelphia Eagles win the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> That's a huge compliment. If it's the Eagles Super Bowl birth of my child. One at one two. Marriage is probably two is is right right with the right with the Emily marriage. Emily is watching right the by birth. The way. No, it's fine. She knows. She knows. The, the the day the Philadelphia Eagles I cried more when the Eagles won the Super Bowl than any day of my life. And that, that, more, so, more so than the birth of your baby. If you're if you're number two, if you're number two, that's a that's an honor. That's an honor. Uh, um, I mean, I'm, I, I now I want to go watch that movie when we're done here because it's uh, such a good so, movie. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. Hey, Chris, <laughs> do you have any cliff notes? I do. It's been quite the show. A lot of stuffs happened, so nothing can stop this little boy from recapping the day. The Chris's cliff notes way. Emily just put in chat. I understand. By the way, she gets it. <laughs> 
<laughs> she totally gets it. She totally gets it. I had quite a few actually cliff notes. I, I did make the final a little bigger. My dad now my eyesight's going. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. When you become a dad, your eyesight your eyesight um, immediately goes away, and also you could do that special whistle where there's like the vibrato in the whistle. Oh yeah, I know. I noticed that. I, yeah, I it's just the whole <laughs> block can hear me. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's strange. So before we get the cliff notes started, I just wanted to say, share some somber news. Uh, the past 24 hours, the president of Iran was killed in a helicopter crash the other day. So, oh, so sad. So I just wanted to say oh, that no real silence. quick. I'm so sad. <laughs> nah, it's all right. You can pause the episode if you want to put silence. We'll keep going. I talk about the birth of my child and how well Emily did uh, through her 24 hour plus of labor. And since no one asked, I'm okay too. Everything went, everyone, everything went fine with me. It was tough, but I made it through. Uh, Nick talked about on, on his uh, most recent cruise ship, there are seven water slides. Now, actually, there are eight if you include your taint, Nick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that. Uh, Nick was talking about how he wanted to take uh, Piper to the kids' club on the cruise ship. Upon learning there was a kids' club, Scott immediately booked three cruises. <laughs> Probably through another travel agent, though. I said, what, 12,000 kids did you say on this cruise? Oh, my God. And that's no, low? Rachel, Rachel just booked that herself. <laughs> uh, Nick talked about how he puts sunscreen on everyone before they leave their cabin. Now, I can attest to this. When I was on a cruise with Nick, Nick helped you with my sunscreen. Very thorough. Although, the place he applied the sunscreen the most, you don't really get much sun. So, I wasn't really sure <laughs> why. Never know. <laughs> Uh, Nick talked about the Ronald McDonald House. Now, McDonald's started a new thing where you can round up your order to donate to the Ronald McDonald House, which is really cool. In the past week, I've donated $45.53 through this method. <laughs> I kid you not. We've been over a few days. Uh, my daughter's been to the McDonald's drive through twice already. <laughs> oh. you'll, be, you'll be there every day when she's like oh six. I can't wait. I cannot wait. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that kid's gonna have all of her first birthday parties. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, I'm, that's all, why I had a kid. Uh, all the Happy Meals, <laughs> so many, so many toys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, Ryan talked a lot about pearl necklaces during his segment. Uh, Nick, if you don't know what that reference means, why do you keep asking me to send pictures of myself wearing one? <laughs> and those are my cliff notes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. You know, I, I was the McDonald's birthday parties. Do you guys remember as kids mm -hmm. either going to a McDonald's oh, I party? Had one. You mm -hmm. had one. Yeah. I, I'll never forget. Like when I was a kid, I wanted to have a McDonald's birthday party so bad. And I never had it. I'm like, why do you guys hate me to my parents? And I, I, like, I wanted a McDonald's birthday party. Yeah. Yeah. And you got the cake with like, it was like an edible piece of paper on top. Like yeah. <laughs> that was like printed on the cake. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah, was yeah. awful. <laughs> it, but the best. Now, if my kid gets invited to a McDonald's birthday party, I'm immediately judging that family. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like chick not Chick-fil-A. <laughs> yeah. no. no, I'm like, you all must stay at the value resorts at Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> They ate at T-Rex. And <laughs> <laughs> so in chat, Jaws Robert just said that he became the Hamburglar mascot. Like Jaws was the Hamburglar. What? Uh, I don't think I ever met him. The I know. Mascots. <laughs> just Ronald McDonald. But it was, that was always so creepy. Yeah, was that a volunteer uh, yes. thing, Jaws? We're gonna have to get Jaws on the on the podcast one day. Yeah, I'm curious about this. So I, if if I it's a volunteer it. thing, Scott's gonna be applying very quickly. <laughs> I need I'll to be know grimace. More. Scott, you already have the you already have the face paint. You can uh <laughs> you can go <with> grimace. <laughs> I mean Piper has her own favorite McDonald's now that has the playground. Like she oh, wants yeah, me to yeah. take her to that one all the time now. But yeah, like oh, yeah. I, those birthday parties. They were the best. I was like, okay. damn. Yeah, Scott's I like, I only been... go to the ones at the playground. I've not. Wait. Jaws started as the Easter Bunny, then got promoted to the uh, hamburger. <laughs> Jaws and I have a lot in common. You do. You were yeah. like the SpongeBob the from Wish. And yeah, actually, and Mickey Mouse from Wish. I was like, I was like his cousin. It was, it was, yeah. 
I don't go to McDonald's very often, but now I want a Big Mac. It's so good. I get, so good. I get, a, I get a, somebody asked me, oh, you like McDonald's? What's your, what's your, do you have a go-to order? But yes, double cheeseburger with Mac sauce, no pickles, add bacon. Every time. Oh. Every See, time. I get the number one, ex, uh, number one value meal supersized. Value meal? What the hell is a value meal? Uh, I'm the, not surprised that you get a supersized. So. Yeah. Is there, they, they, they the still Big do Mac that? meal. The number one meal. They still do that? Supersized? Yeah. Really? I thought well, they got rid of that. I thought, I thought no, Obama got rid of that. It's large. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think Michelle Obama <laughs> was like, no, 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 we're not doing this anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then I get uh, two sides of buffalo sauce for my fries. <laughs> that, you, it's a very strange order. <laughs> well, okay, so here's the thing. You if don't have fries, buffalo sauce? Like you need the bu- huh? theirs? You need their buffalo sauce? Yeah, for the fries. What? Because typically if I'm hungry enough to go to drive through, the food's not making it home with me. So you're dipping the buffalo sauce while you drive? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Fries. How do you do that? I drive with, with my knee. knee. The fries are for the way home. The burgers when you get into your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's what I do every time. I, I have to. So sometimes you those McDonald's fries come out and they're perfectly crispy. Like they were cooked yeah. perfect. They're not soggy mm-hmm. and they're great. And it doesn't require any sauce. Yeah. Sometimes you get them where they're, maybe they've been sitting for a little bit. Maybe... They haven't been uh, fried mm-hmm. enough, so that's why I get the buffalo sauce oh, for those. I didn't occasions. even know they had buffalo sauce at McDonald's for the nuggies. Had no idea. Oh, yeah. I'm not. I'm not a nug guy. I'm a burger guy. Oh, you will. You will be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as, <laughs> as a dad, you will be. Get ready for the nugs and the mac and cheese. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, where can our listeners uh, find you? You can find me on the TikTok at Super Sarah ninety four, and you can find me on the Instagram. At Old Soul Thrift. Nick? You can find me on Instagram at Emotional Support Gay Nick. And you can also find me on all social media platforms at Sam Piper Vacations. And reach out to us to book your next vacation. Chris, where can our listeners find you? You can find me on Instagram at Chris Yob. I think I have one new post of my oh. daughter that you can check out. Maybe I do. I think I do. Uh, I don't know. Did I post? I'm pretty sure I posted. Uh, I do post, uh, I'll probably be posting a lot more. So if you want to see what my daughter looks like, you can go check her out on there. TikTok, I am at Chris Yab NNF. And then I do want to give one more plug, Scott, if you if you will allow me. Our go good it. friend over at Big Beautiful Diz on YouTube has a documentary that is out now, if you're listening to this, on the 24th. Uh, came out behind the glass. It's the documentary on the Disney animation building at, uh, that was at MGM Studios. And uh, he has really big names on there, Bob Weiss being one of them, which is amazing because he created, he's one of the creators of MGM Studios. And uh, a lot of other people that were uh, worked on Lilo and Stitch and Brother Bear and uh, the hyenas from The Lion King. So please check out that, that documentary. He's been working on it for close to a year now. Uh, you can find that at Big Beautiful Diz on YouTube. And you can connect with us, all of our website, all of our links are on our website, no new friends podcast.com. You can check out our sweet merchandise, join our clubhouse and become a friend with benefits. That's our Patreon for as low as $2 a month. Uh, you can watch us record everything that we do, including uh no new friends after dark, whenever that comes back. Uh, and then exclusive content and, and giveaways and all that good stuff. Also, if you listen to us on any platform that allows you to give a review and a rating, please give us a five star rating and review that really helps us out do not do a four star just email me if you have a problem (laughs) on behalf of this sophisticated gentleman game master ryan our producer alex nick sarah chris i'm scott thank you so much for listening we'll see you next time happy birthday chris no new friends just the old and the bold in the world of games we're the ones who hold scott chris sarah Where editing unfolds 